in the previous lesson, we went over solving exponential equations that, that did not use logs. For example, we did a question like this, where both of these numbers have to become the same. And so what we could have done in the, those types of questions is we could have changed this one to two to the power of two, and this number can become two to the power of five. So then what you would end up with is that and that. You would then use exponent rules here to multiply. And then the twos would be the same. So you could just ignore that. Then you could take all the n's to the one side. So you'd end up with 12n equals to zero. And if you had to solve, you'd end up with zero. Now that was the easy type of exponential where the numbers can become the same. But what if you have a situation like this? So let's say, for example, you took this 9 over. You'd have 10 to the power of x take away 9 equals to negative 7 add 9. Then you end up with that. Now, it is impossible to turn this number and this number into the same thing. So what are we going to do? Well, when you cannot make these numbers the same, we need to then use logs, and that's what I'm going to show you. So let's not, let's not solve this one. I want to show you how to use logs first. So I need to teach you how to convert from exponential, which is this. I need to show you how to convert that into log. Okay, so let me show you how it works. If you have a to the power of x equals to b, then to, that is exponential. Okay, because there's a exponent, there's a variable in the exponent. To turn that into a log, you take the exponent first, and then you make that equal to log of whatever the base was. Now the base is the number that was with the exponent, and then the other number goes over here, the other. Okay, so what that means is the exponent is x. Log, the base was a, and then the other part was b. What if we have something like a to the x minus 3 equals to c? So you start with the exponent, which is now x minus 3. Not just x, the whole exponent. You then make that equal to log of the base and then the other number. Okay? So let's say, for example, you have this. You cannot get a 2 and a 7 to be the same. So what you do is you take your exponent, you make it equal to the log of the base, and then the other number. And then if you wanted to, you could go type that on the calculator and it'll give you the answer, okay? Well, let's actually do that because I did say let's solve. So go ahead, see if your calculator can um, use log and then it should have a base and, and, and you should be able to type in this two and the seven over here. You may have to ask your teacher just to show you um, how your calculator can do it. But if you do this, let's round off to two decimal places, you should be getting 2,81. You see, so now we can solve for x. Let's try this one. So you take the exponent, and, and just remind yourself why we need to do this, because these two numbers are not the same. However, if we had something like this, then we wouldn't need to use logs. You could if you wanted to, but this could become 2 to the 4, and then notice that these two numbers are the same, and so then you would end up with that. And then if you had to get x by itself, you would get 4 plus 2, which is 6. You see, so here you don't have to use logs. As I said, you can if you want. But here you have to use logs because it is impossible to get these two numbers to be the same. So you take the exponent, you make it equal to log of the base, and then the other number. To get x by itself now, you could then say log 2 of 7 plus 2, because I brought that 2 over. Now remember that this is together. You don't want to, on your calculator, have the 7 and the 2 plus together. This is one part, and then that's by itself. So if you had to go type that in on the calculator now, you would end up with 4,81 if you do two decimals. Here's the next one. This 3 and this 8, they cannot be the same. So what you do is you take the exponent, which is not just r, it's the 2r. You make it equal to log of the base and then the other number. If you then had to get r by itself, it would be log 3 of 8 divided by 2. And so if you had to calculate that or type that on the calculator, you should get 0 0.95 if you round it to two decimals. These two numbers could never be the same. So you take the exponent, which is this one, you make it equal to log of the base, and then the other number. 
So if you then had to get x by itself, it would be log 4, 3, and then add 6. So this is by itself, okay? And so if you had to solve that, you should get 6.79 if you use two decimals. Okay, so here you cannot get these numbers to be the same, so we'll use logs. You take the exponent, you make it equal to log of the base, and then the other number. And so you end up with 2x equals to log 4, 5, and then add 1. You then have to divide all of that by 2, so you can get x completely alone. Well, actually, I can just write it like that. Go ahead, type that all in. Now, if you do this one correctly, you should get x equals to 1.5. 08. Okay, we've got two more challenging examples coming up. So, here you want to get this part by itself, okay, because you always want it to be in the form, um, you want your exponent and then whatever's on the other side, okay? You don't want all of these random numbers just chilling there. So, step one is just going to be take this to the right. This cannot become 60. You cannot multiply those two because of those exponents. So, you're going to end up with 6 and then 10 to the 3 take away 7x equals to 88 minus 1.7, which is then 86.3, divide by 6. I wouldn't type that on the calculator yet because it's not a nice number, and you don't want to be rounding off until the very end. So here we have the form that we want, though. We've got a base, we've got an exponent, and we've got another number. So now we can turn it into logs. So we can say 3 minus 7x, which is the exponent, equals to log of the base, and then whatever the other number is. Okay, now we want to get this by itself. So I'm going to take this 3 to the right, so it'll become negative 3. Okay, then we need to divide everything by negative 7. There we go, type it on the calculator just like that. And so if you had to solve this, you're going to get 0, 0,2632. If you round it to four decimals, this one we said four decimals. So here's our last example. So remember, the goal is to get this number by itself, or this part by itself, and then you want all the other things on the other side. So let's take this over. Remember, these cannot multiply together. So it's going to become negative 43.2, add 3, which would be, then be negative 40.2. We then divide both sides by negative 3, which would become 13.4. Now we have the format that we're looking for, which is a to the x equals to b. So you take the exponent, you make that equal to log of the base, which is this number, and then the other number, like that. Now we need to get this p by itself, so I'm going to take that negative 0 0.5 and add it onto the other side, like that. Now to get p alone, you'd have to divide both sides by negative 3, so that you have p by itself. Now you can go ahead, type that all in on the calculator, and to four decimal places, you should get negative 0 0.5424.